I've been wanting one of these for a very long time. I finally decided to get one. So I want to tell you all about my first impressions riding it. How easy is it to get the hang of? Why did I get it? Should you get it? Uh, let's talk about it. So to give you a little bit of context, I've only owned this for one day and I've rode 11 miles total. No previous one wheel experience except one time that my good friend Cody Warner came into town and I rode his up and down the street. That was it. Before I owned the one wheel, I did have a boosted board dual plus. So I had that long board for a decent amount of time. I still have it, it doesn't work anymore, but I was fairly experienced and felt pretty comfortable on the boosted board flying around at top speed with no issues whatsoever. I will say that the learning curve on this is much more difficult than the boosted board. Kind of just hand someone a boosted controller, they could stand on it and go very slow. This takes some getting used to. For an example of that, let's let Ben try it. <laughs> so there are two different models of the one wheel. There is the one wheel pint and the one wheel XR. The pint is the smaller version and the XR is the larger version. And I personally decided to go with the pint for two main reasons. Number one, portability. While this thing still is very heavy and not just the most comfortable thing ever to carry, it's carryable and maneuverable and portable. I can throw it in my truck. I can kind of bring it with me more places because it's a little less bulky. The pint also is the only one wheel that can actually be transported on an airplane because it is under 160 kilowatt or whatever battery size it has to be to be able to be transported on an airplane. That's super cool because one of my ideas behind having this is when I do travel, I could potentially bring it with me. Because a lot of times when I get to cities that I don't obviously have a vehicle in, I have to rent Ubers or I have to walk around. It would be much more fun to be able to carry this around. If you get stranded and have to walk for a long period of time with the one wheel, it can get heavy. The Pint does make this nice little handle integrated, but even when you're carrying it on your side, it still is rather heavy. I think it's 23 pounds, but uh, doing this the entire time, while it's a good workout, it's not necessarily something you want to do. Now one thing to note between the Pint and the XR is that if you are planning on doing a ton of off-roading, they do recommend the XR. While the Pint can also do a lot of the same off-roading, the smaller wheel and the more kind of maneuverability that the Pint does have isn't necessarily as good for off-roading because of how squirmy it can feel. A lot of people love the Pint because it has a more rounded wheel to it, and because of that rounded wheel being not so flat like the XR, the XR is actually easier to ride and can ride at higher speeds. This one can maneuver faster, but because of that, it's a little bit slower as well, and it also is a little bit trickier when you're actually going off-road because of just how much it can kind of really wobble itself out of place. Probably the biggest learning curve, though, is simply the stopping and getting off for most people. Once you're actually on the board, you can kind of pretty much get used to it rather quickly at least to be able to go. But to stop, that's another whole story. One of the modes they created in this is called Simple Stop. I don't really like that name because honestly I don't feel like it's very simple, but in a nutshell, after you come to a stop and you level out, the light will turn pink as you start to slowly reverse and meaning it's in simple stop, you simply press the tail down and you can get off without a problem rather than it flying out from underneath you like a lot of people do with the XR. The problem is, it doesn't seem like it's actually that simple in the actual real world. My preferred method and what I think is actually just the easiest is to just hop off. You literally just jump off with two feet at the same time. It's important to do the same time. Just jump off, let the board fall. It's great. One of the things I wasn't a huge fan of when it came to the boosted board was the fact that the boosted board is a long board and a long board obviously is not super maneuverable. It's really comfortable for like flying full speed and just being super comfortable and it's really comfortable to stand on and ride but when you're making turns you have to take pretty wide turns unless you're going really fast and if you come to a stop or you need to quickly go around people like in a sidewalk or some sort of crowded area the boosted board is not good for that. Many times you're basically stopping your ride, picking up the boosted board, turning it around or putting it in a different direction, and then starting again, which is not super convenient when you're actually out and about. What I really love about the one wheel, specifically the Pine, is just how easy it is to make a complete U-turn even in a small little path, so it makes it much easier to just simply make turns. So even on a small, small path like this, being able to instantly maneuver is so convenient because there are a lot of times that you need to do that when you're out and about on your little journey and it's so much more fun and not so dangerous. This is one thing you wouldn't want to try with a boost. It's 
Also, for those who are gonna kill me about the helmet thing, I do normally wear a helmet. I'm just not for this review because I'm not going very fast. Even those wide shots, I'm going like eight miles an hour. You'll notice I fall a lot because I'm still getting used to it, but I've mastered making sure that as soon as I don't feel comfortable, I slow down as quick as possible and just jump off. That is super important, I can't even tell you that enough. Get used to and get good at jumping off because it's easy to do. Even if you're buying the one wheel, not necessarily to go off-roading or to go in grass or even gravel or anything, what's nice about this compared to the boosted board is the boosted board, if you're going full speed and you hit something as small as like a little stick or even the wrong rock, it can literally come to a stop and throw you off the board. I had a friend who broke his collarbone doing that. The pine's good because when you're actually out and about traveling, you don't have to worry about the small little things that may completely derail or kill you. Now granted, you still want to be careful about those things, but it's definitely nice having something that you don't have to worry about as much. You can also go up little small curves or little bumps and sidewalks and everything and not worry about getting tossed off. So it's not necessarily about you're buying this just to be able to off-road, but if you're in a city and you want to actually ride more on a sidewalk compared to a street, which might be safer for you, you know that most sidewalks are not very smooth to ride on. I never ever rode my boosted board on the sidewalk because it wasn't fun and it was extremely scary because every single bump you hit, you may go flying off. This, I feel pretty comfortable doing that with. So the real question you're asking yourself is like, why did I actually get it? Well, the answer is simple. Number one, because it's fun. And it's always fun to have a couple of random toys that don't actually have a purpose in your life. And this is one of the most fun toys I've ever owned. Number two, occasional transportation. I'm not usually gonna take this to go all the way to work from my house or anything, but having it in downtown when I am at work to just go grab a coffee or just to kind of have a phone meeting and just get on the one wheel and have a little bit more fun than just walking around the office. And for the travel side of it, when I definitely get to different cities that I have never been to before, and I don't want to obviously keep parking my truck everywhere or being able to just get around easy and not have to take an Uber, that's a big factor for me is I wanted to have something kind of like I did with the boosted board, but I feel like this feels a little bit safer than the boosted board because you're not as worried about all the bumps. Another kind of hidden feature of the one wheel, one of the reasons I bought it is actually from like a filmmaking perspective. Now, that's not the actual reason I bought it, even though I kind of did tell my wife that, but it is kind of a cool tool to be able to use and a lot of people are actually using this in the filmmaking industry now for like, gimbal and dolly type of shots where you need to go a little faster than like a person running and clearly if a person's running you're getting a lot of more movement in the camera so being able to actually use this and walk next to somebody and even without a gimbal you can still get some pretty impressive shots because the one wheel obviously is smoother than your feet running or walking check it out this is handheld as you can see i'm trying my best but definitely doesn't look very good all in all, the biggest reason is it's fun. So here's three quick beginner tips that I have as someone who is beginner who now feels a little bit more comfortable. Number one, when you get on and you are starting to make any progress leaning forward, try to just look ahead and don't look down. When you look down, your body kind of wobbles. It's the same idea that when a server carries a margarita, you're not supposed to look at the margarita being full. You just look ahead and you walk. Same thing with this. When you're on the board, just try your best to just look forward and naturally lean. It makes it a little bit easier. Number two, don't get overconfident. As soon as you get overconfident with any of these kind of electric boards, boosted boards, hoverboards, anything, that's usually when you have an issue. Stay at a nice, gradual, slow speed until you get really comfortable and make sure that you definitely wear a helmet and protective gear. Like I said in this video, I'm not going very fast and I'm comfortable enough at the speed I'm going to hop off if something happens. I highly recommend you wear a helmet and you wear anything that would keep you safe. Number three, if you have a friend nearby, grab onto their shoulders and just get used to going at a very slow speed and feeling that balance. It is weird for the first time to just hop on one wheel with a motor and try to balance yourself for the first time. I feel like I'm a pretty coordinated person, so when I hopped on the XR for the first time, it didn't feel that hard for me to do, but still, it's weird to get used to, especially when you don't aren't super confident and you get a little bit wobbly. So grab a friend if you need to, try to just get used to that balance because it's weird to get used to. You can even turn the battery off and kind of just try to balance a little bit more on it without it going whatsoever. I'm not sure how helpful that is, but at least we'll give you a feel for like how you kind of have to balance yourself when it's going slow. And the last bonus tip is if you're not super concerned about the cost and you can afford 1800 versus 950 for the pint and you don't really care as much about the portability side of it, 
then just go ahead and get the XR because the XR actually is easier to ride than the Pint because it does not have as rounded of a wheel. So the Pint is absolutely supposed to be more carvable and more maneuverable than the XR, but that comes with the learning curve as well. It takes getting used to because it does really want to wobble because that whole wheel, as you can see, is pretty curved. So the most important question is, should you buy one? That answer is probably the easiest I can give you. Yes, they are super fun and uh, you will absolutely fall in love with this thing. I already am obsessed with it and I barely have had it for over a day. Filmmakers, if you want to kind of talk your spouse into potentially like letting you buy one, just say that it's really for your filmmaking. It's not just because it's incredibly fun and everyone should have one. You're welcome.